Hello and welcome back to Smack It Down, Australian wrestling podcast. I am your host, Jay Silver, and I'm joined by my co-host. Are you going to say my name or do I have to say it? You're supposed to say it. <laughs> Corey Gold. Classic. Classic, classic, classic. 149 takes and you think we'd get it right. 149, dude. That's all the false starts and crap. We yeah. Yeah, like to say 300. What are you on about? Yeah. <laughs> 400 149 that count we're not if we have to count the ones where we fucked up an intro or one of us forgot to hit record and we've gotten about half an hour into recording oh they're the funnest ones they're the episodes that have got no issues with them no cutting each other off no nothing they're the perfect episodes you know it's just a shame no one ever gets to hear them because <laughs> we have exactly. to start over uh, they they exist for the people that know where to look on my computer that is currently dead and in the shed. <laughs> yeah, so because all this is share. currently, I was going to say because all this is currently being recorded off my phone, which is an S twenty three Ultra that's about to be thrown in a fucking bin. So you got to look in the bin, in the shed. Where else do they have to look to find good smack it down episodes? Uh anything with JD or Joel. <laughs> yep. Any 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 episode that has nothing to do with us. Any episode that has people that aren't us on it, you know, like besides us, the extra people make it work. And Alex yeah. too, he had good episodes as well. Yeah, I mean, me and him had some great episodes when you weren't there, so, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry <laughs> I put you through that. <laughs> yeah, but look at me. I'm, I'm the real idiot. I'm the one who keeps coming back for more. Yeah, you're the one that likes the punishment. Yeah, I'm a sucker for pain. You're addicted to pain. Such a good song by Alter Bridge. Seriously, they're not terrible. They also sing Edge's song. I lo- love the tie-in to wrestling. I also sing the Judgment Day song, which is also very good. Yeah, Mummy's back. Mommy and, Dom is back. In the, and Dom's in the doghouse. <sighs> yeah, there's a lot of similarities between this and the Eddie Guerrero stuff with Chawana. Yeah. Don't you just hate it when you have to go home to your wife and explain that your mommy caught you with your side chick? Oh, that's right. He's married, isn't he? Yeah. In real, real life. Be... This is basic dominomics. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Dominic Mysterio really does belong to the streets. Indeed, he does. Indeed, he does. So let me ask you a question. Yep. What did you think of Osprey MJF? That was a match. What a I didn't like it. I, I, I didn't like it. You didn't like it? I didn't like it. What didn't you like about it? <sighs> I'm going to go with the pacing. Yeah? Okay. I can understand that. And I think hey. the pace might have been a little bit off, sure. But I think the just all round quality was pretty good. Like, no, 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 like, don't get me wrong here. Like, no, 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 like, take me wrong here. Like, it, it was good. It, it was good. I just thought that the pacing was off because it was just flat and act the whole way through. There was no room to breathe unless it was an ad break. And then it just. So <sighs> then there was room to breathe then because there were ad breaks. They obviously, you know, toned it down when, when they knew they were going to ad break. I don't know, bro. Something with the match just didn't sit right with me. And call me crazy if you yeah. must, but I thought it was a solid match. I just thought that the pacing was off. You know, I'm not going to give it five stars. Like it was probably three and a half to four with me. What did you think of the of the finish? <laughs> I thought the finish was great. <laughs> yep. So you liked the finish? I did. Did you? Will, Will refusing to hit the Tiger Driver 91 and costs himself. Yep. That's the one. And yeah. And Max on the oxygen tank. <laughs> yep. That was, um, yeah, that... that was a callback to something. You know, uh, tell us what. I can't remember. Wait, that was a callback to um the match with Brian. What what was the show though? I know they it... hit they had an Iron Man match. Didn't they? Yeah, what was what, yeah they did and ended in a um yeah two what, what v, was the two two draw yeah then that was sudden death what was the pay per view though was it um 
Was it Revolution? I think it, I think it might have been Revolution last year. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Um, yeah so what, what was the point there? Oh, just the, the oxygen tank thing was a callback to that match. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. I, mean, I, I just loved it. It's like somewhat clean the whole, some oh, clean for an MJF match whole, most of the way through it. Yeah, obviously the just, dynamite diamond ring. The clock pops up, 10, 9, 8, boom. 7, 6, 1, 2, 3, 2 seconds left, new champion. And there was the delay too from like the crowd and everything where it's like you got to wait for Justin to announce it where it's like, you're a winner and new. See, that was a little bit underwhelming that way, Justin, yeah, Roberts. Like, because we all saw it was clear as day on the clock two seconds ago. Just put some gusto into it. Hey, oh. How far through did you think they were going to go the distance? Uh, I thought it, it, was going it to almost be a, went to a 60 minute Broadway. I thought that's what it was going to be. I thought they were going to go for the classic time limit draw. Well, funnily enough, Stephen, I messaged earlier on the week. It could be like, who's winning out of um, MJF or Osprey? Because I thought MJF was winning. Like, I won't deny that. I didn't think it was going to go I this thought, long. He goes, it's going to be said, a. You said, yeah, I asked you. You said, it was, you said MJF. I said MJF. Steven's yep. a draw. Yeah. He almost got it. Mm. He, he almost. almost. Yeah. I mean, I, that, that would have been like the smart thing because then what they draw, they rematch it all in or something. Oh, they're going to rematch it all in anyway. But um, what do you do now? No DQ? Like I think you give the belt back to. Be... He gives the belt back to Osprey this soon. Like, what? What do you do here? I think they have to like insert a third or whatever. Like, maybe Daniel Garcia comes back into the fold or whatever. Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. I think maybe he'll he'll come in. Maybe you know there might be some Adam Cole or Roderick Strong related shit going on. I don't know. I'm surprised he's not back yet. He suffered a setback apparently. Uh, he hasn't had a very good run in AEW, has he? That's why they had MJF, you know, do what he did when he came back just to tie a bow on that storyline for now. That's fair. But like I said, he hasn't had a um, good run in AEW. No, no, he's got a great character, but yeah, like... He he's is injury just... prone at the moment. What's going on with him? And the problem is, like, I know he's got injured legs, but wouldn't you just pump your upper body workouts? Like, he looks <laughs> malnourished. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, like, he, does. he just doesn't look like you know. He just, I hate to like because there's nothing worse than body shaming in wrestling and that. And but you just feel like, my man, like you got to help us out here. Look, I like the boom. I'm cool with it being all about the boom. The boom just needs to put on some muscle or something. Yeah. That's yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like, pump some iron while you're on the couch, dude. Like, I know you can't work your legs, but like, surely there's got to be like, like some, you know, like shoulder workouts, some biceps. He's probably working you know. his fingers, bro. Either streaming yeah. or playing with Brit. Yeah. Uh, did you hear the? I think I told you this a while ago. The Nigel McGuinness call about how you know Brian Danielson. He's like he's even a, he's even faking being a vegan because he can't keep his mouth out of brie. <laughs> I did hear that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God damn. Classic. I really hope Nigel McGuinness just has one match in AEW and, it, and it's against Nigel Brian likes Danielson. everyone except for Brian. <laughs> I know. That's. I'm just really hoping that, you know, we get that match eventually. I thought it was going to be at Wembley. I thought it was going to happen. I thought it was going to be at Wembley, but it's not at Wembley, so I don't think it's going to happen. Like, this is oh, Brian's okay. last year, unless his last match at... Um, Full gear it is Nigel, but it would have made more sense to do it in Wembley. Mm. Better question is, does he win the belt next month or not? Brian, no. Nah. No, nah, I don't think so either. I think there will be like a Hangman versus, it's my pitch, Hangman versus Okada at All In. Winner gets an AEW title match. How are we getting to that? Well, let's say they have a bit of, you know, a standoff in the blood and guts match. I'm predicting that Team Elite win. Like, you know, 
Hangman was going to go for the, you know, for the win somehow, but then Okada, you know, actually, you know, one-ups him, you know, kind of like how Claudio did against Eddie. Right. If you remember that one. I do not. I think there was, like, they were both on top of the cage, and then I think Eddie had a submission on, but then so did Claudio, but then, you know, whoever Claudio had in the submission was the person that said, Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, it was and wasn't like, Jericho in the spin. Yeah, or and then, like or Sammy was. Yeah, and then Sammy was the other one. And yeah, I can just see Hangman being like, "No, I'm the one who wants." And let's say, you no, know, like Hangman was trying to get Swerve to say, "I surrender" or "I quit," and you know, Okada gets someone out, like someone else to say it. You know, Team AEW for this on Blood and Guards isn't exactly great. <laughs> I like <clears throat> I like Swerve and Near claimed. Darby Allen's a good pick, but my only issue is Mark Briscoe. My issue is the acclaimed. Why why the acclaimed? Just don't like him at the moment. Why's that? Um, kind of so over the shtick. You reckon they've gone stale? Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. But from a storyline point of view, it makes sense. You know, I, I get it. I do. I get why everyone's in the match. I do. I just... I'm not... Maybe I'm going sour on on the product at the moment. I don't know. Like, the product's good. I just... Maybe it's just not think, clicking for me. I think the problem is having the Young Bucks as the tag team champions that are never on camera. or well, they are on camera but they never actually wrestle or defend the belts, and therefore the whole tag team division lacks because of it. Maybe my focus is more on the G1 at the moment because I'm curious what New Japan's going to do. Like We talk about um, AEW's booming tag team division. That's what the Young Bucks have always been adamant, having a booming tag team division. Can't even name just four teams in the division besides like not including the two that are currently featured. Yeah, so then after that, you've got what FTR, Private Party... Who else could you name as an AEW tag team? I mean, Kings of the Black Throne, I guess. Yeah. That's three. Say... <laughs> mm-hmm. I said four. You've got, <laughs> you've, got you've got the four. gun you've got gun you've got gun bullet club uh, gold. Yeah, maybe. you got the gun club. Yeah, no that yeah, that yeah, okay. We got yeah, the four. So there's about four yeah, but then like other other than that it's just uh, jobber tag teams, I don't know. And that's it, Who's... that's the biggest problem. That is the problem. That is the problem. Because, like, I don't see, like, besides Hangman, I don't, and, like, Mox and stuff, like, I don't see anyone who hasn't held the belt already as a credible challenger currently for the Swerve. Hmm. But do you? I think it has to, that's what I'm saying, it has to be, like, Okada or Hangman. I don't see anyone currently as a challenger for Okada. I don't see anyone currently as a challenger for, um... Actually, no, no, no. I just take it back. I don't see anyone's challenger for for the continental of the world currently. So yeah, Okada doesn't have a challenge, is what you're saying. I I don't see anyone taking the like. I don't see anyone built up currently to take it off him. No, I don't see anyone even like contending for that belt currently. Besides the random matches that get put on Dynamite or Rampage or Collision. Okay, I think what needs to happen is the continental. And AEW championship needs to merge. And even you've said that FG. a couple times, but if they were going no, no. to do that, I said it. No, I've, I've said the international and continental crown. But now I've got a new theory, right? All right. The C two should be for the AEW world title, right? I disagree. Okay, but let me f- continue. Let me finish. So. If you win the C2, you become the, you know, Continental Crown Champion. You take that belt to Revolution to challenge the AEW World Champion. So it's literally just the J1. Yes, but in December. It would make more sense to me, logically, to potentially get rid of the Continental Crown and just make yeah. the C2 a thing like the G1, but they get to pick what belt they challenge for, like the G1 used to be. Yeah, I but think I it's choose, sorry, not sorry, not the G one, but like the New Japan Cup used to be. Yeah, 
but I think the Continental Championship should just be like a memento kind of a thing, like the Owen Hart belt. Like you don't just see that every week. It's more of like a, hey, here it is. You can wear it for a week or two and then, you know, put it on the shelf. You know, um, I know you haven't watched, I know you haven't watched New Japan for a while. Like uh, last year, I think it was, or the year before. No, not I want to go on last year. So I was Okada the year before that. Um, so two years ago when Okada won the G1, he didn't carry the briefcase with him. He carried the um, version four title, like his world title. Yeah. So that was his proof of winning the G1. Uh, yeah, and then he beat, and then he beat Jay White in the main event for the belt, and then Jay showed up in AW and has done nothing. It's not true. He had a he started the Bullet Club Gold. He's got the trios title. He had the Max feud, but I think oh he uh, had post- the trios title. They got stripped of them. What happened there? I missed that. Oh, didn't you see it? He um because storyline reasons, uh, Jay wasn't there to defend it against someone or. Some thought of no, like I think it was a job team. Uh, so they're gonna put Juice in to replace him, and then um, old mate comes out, uh, Brandon Fallen Cutler. Angel, not Fallen uh-huh. Angel, um, comes yep. out and says the Freebird rule isn't in effect and strips him of the titles to be a um, trios match against Patriarchy coming up. Yeah, I saw, Which I, I, like... would assu- I would assume the Patriarchy is winning that. See, I so they, they probably didn't want to have a heel team beat a heel team for the belts. But they're still making a heel team beat a heel team for the belts because they got stripped for a minute still. Yeah. Does this mean like the guns are about and like, you know, Bull Club Gold are going to become faces then or? Maybe. I mean, wherever Juice is is good for me, you know? Juice is always a face. Yeah. I don't care what you say. The dude is just a ball of energy. Yep. yep, 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 yep. I think it makes so, sense for the patriarchy to win because you, Christian is just a, an absolute he's a whiz on the mic. You have to give him a title and something to do. Did you see his interview a few weeks back where he's saying the Christian Cage has never been in the WWE? I, technically, I guess he's right. Yeah, he said they're Christian. two different characters. Yeah. And he thinks Christian Cage is better than Christian. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> you could never get away with what he says, though, on WWE. No, you would not. Although, I am curious what happens when they go to Netflix. Mm. They've already pretty much just thrown in the towel when it comes to censoring stuff. They're, they're just what going to not censor anything or just... I don't know, bro. You're consistently hearing Pat on commentary swearing and crap, so I have no idea. Mm. I think they honestly need that. I'm so glad they got rid of that superimposed CGI shit on the entrances, too. Yeah, me too. Me too. This looks so tacky. Like, you've got, you're making record profits every year. Just buy some fireworks. <laughs> Stop with the weird CG and buy me some firecrackers. And actually have, you know, different stage setups. For every pay per view, like give the give the pay per views characters character, you know. When did I stop doing that? Honestly, too long ago now to remember. Just bring back the hooks for Bachelor for Backlash. That was yeah, was it? And the what's it called? The swinging axe things for Judgment Day, was it? Uh, I think that was the one for Backlash. The swingy pendulum things. Pendulums. That's it. Was that? Backlash. I thought that was that might have been Judgment Day, but yeah, I guess you can't bring back Judgment Day because there's now a, a faction called Judgment Day. Yeah, give them their own pay per view, like the old in your houses. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, like how cool was it? Yeah, when every pay per view had its own like cool design. Bring that back. That was actually I, pretty sweet. See, that's where AEW could like you know differentiate themselves. That is true. That is true. Like, I, I like how they have the two separate tunnels. That makes sense. But you can still do, you know, like, you can work around that. Did you notice that Hangman walked up the face tunnel because he thinks he's justified? Yeah. I like that, yeah. See, that's a very, that's a, see, he's one of their best characters right now. Mm-hmm. And they need to put that level of effort into all the characters they create. 
Like MJF yes, is do. on that level. Will, Will Offsprays get into that level? Swerve is there. Hangman. They've got like at least three. I, mm-hmm. I really think Mariah May needs to flush her character out a bit more. Yeah, I didn't like her promo this week. Yeah, I, I guess we have to wait for Tony's clap back. And we'll probably get a bit, a bit more back and forth. Like, I know it's it's week one of it. But, yeah, I think she still has to win the women's belt, though, Mariah. You think so? I think she wins it all in. Yes, I know why. Uh, yeah. Are we, are we done with the timeless character or not? I think the timeless character stays or maybe, you know, she jumps forward a decade or two. <laughs> Different iterations like, of Hollywood. Yeah, she'll just, you know, it won't be done, but she'll add, like, another layer to it or something. Because, like, we're getting close up to, like, a year, like, a year of timeless Tony Storm. When did that start? Like, I think it it debuted at All In last year. But, like, she teased it in the weeks leading up to it. I don't think it debuted, though, because isn't that when Soraya won the belt? It was, yes. And she just took off her. And then hang on, Sheeta took it off her, and then yeah. Sheeta won it from Tony Storm. Sheeta. No, she didn't. She? She won it back. I think she. Hang on, who was champion going into that? Sheeta. And she lost it to Soraya, and then she got it back, and then Tony took it off Sheeta. But yeah, it wasn't. Didn't Tony like lose it to Sheeta? Yeah, so I must have gone Tony, Sheeta, Soraya, Sheeta, Tony. Yes. So the Maybe. third run. This is Tony's whenever, third run, yeah. Whenever she beat Sheeta is when she became timeless. But I think she no, I think she kinda like deb- she kinda like did the, a new entrance and like had a black and white Marilyn Monroe kind of look, but it wasn't quite timeless just yet. Yeah, I, I don't think that was at all in is what I'm saying. I think it might have been a soft launch of the character. At all in, because I really don't remember anything like that at all in. I remember like something like that happening where she had like you know the black and white or like new theme music and something. I could oh. be wrong, but I'm fairly certain. That was a good angle last week. Yeah, that Just was yeah. Pouring blood. <laughs> she was pouring, dude. Yeah, I think Tony's promo will have to save this feud. But, like, again, we've got, like, six weeks to all in or something. So there's plenty of time to flesh this thing out. Yes, yes, there is. <laughs> oh, by the way, I've been keeping an eye on a um a autographed P. How do, I, how do I explain this to you? I want you to picture a trading card, right, in your head. Yeah. yeah. But on the inside of it has a piece of Rhea Ripley's gear and her autograph. Okay. I've been contemplating buying this on eBay for like all day and I yep. don't know whether or not I should and I keep looking at it like, oh, I can I can afford it. Yep. Well, what are your thoughts on this? Should I spend $200 on this or not? So it's like a trading card with a bit of Rhea Ripley's gear in it. It's one of 99 pieces. What part of her gear is it? Do we know? I have no idea. It's either a pants or a shirt. Uh, it's It's a weird... It's kind of weird. Yeah, I'll get it graded, and then I'll resell it in the future for more money. I mean, if you're going to on-sell it, sure. If I'm just going to keep it, that's too weird? Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be the first piece of autography, memorabilia stuff that I've gotten graded for my own amusement. I think just because it's oh, like a piece of Rhea Ripley's gear, and like I just imagine like the type of people that would buy that and the weird things they would do with it, you know? No, it wouldn't, be any, it wouldn't be anything weird with me. It'd just be going in to like get great at a PSA and then sold in a year or two, potentially. I'm, I'm all for buying and non-selling. You're all for buying and non-selling, man. That's my stance. But buying it and keeping it, even if I get it graded, it's a bit weird. Well, if you get it graded and like if it increases the value. But if I don't sell it then, even after it's graded, then it's weird. A little bit. <laughs> Fair enough. That's my stance. You asked my opinion and I've given it to you. It's still 200 bucks, though, and that's the issue. I don't know if it's worth it. Mm. There are some and people out there, though, that'll pay for it. Exactly You're right. You're going to grade it to be 38, so it'll be $238 invested. 
And if it comes back as a 10 or a 9, I reckon I can get 5 for it. Far out. If not more. Yeah, I mean, if if you if it's what your heart desires, don't let me get in the way of it. You still think it's weird, though? <laughs> I, 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 the more you talk, like, it hasn't changed my opinion at all. But if it's worth money, then it's good. You know what they say, Monet yeah. is money. Yeah, speaking of money, Okada or, likes the money dance. Or, oh, holy shit, did he, does he crack me up. I like how they took, like, possibly the greatest worker of the last generation um, and made him into a comedy foreign heel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love how, like, the post, like, I saw online of it was Okada about to risk it all for the Monet. I didn't say that. That's great. <laughs> well, yeah, I kind of really st- like risking everything right now. <laughs> but seriously, they took like possibly the greatest worker that New Japan's produced in a decade and turned him into a foreign comedy heel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but every week he does. He just makes me burst out laughing. I giggle like a child when I see Okada on TV. <laughs> I know, and I think it. The Young Bucks have always been, like, good friends with him, and, like, he's always been a big old goofball, and that's the thing. Have you read the Young Bucks book or listened to it? I've heard, like, the... I've heard parts of it. You should, um... If you got Audible, or you know someone with Audible, like me, um, you should listen to the book. Yeah. It paints a picture on, like, their career leading up to... I think, it was, I think it ends with the founder, like the founding of the company. Yeah. And there's also a lot of um, speech flubs from the narrator, like bad luck fail. Ah. Uh. Instead of far and because other stuff. Yeah, right. It, it's interesting. It's an interesting listen. Yeah. It makes me respect the box a lot more, regardless of how much they piss me off on TV. Yeah. They're definitely at the good end of the at- at the, the end Bucks. of the day, go ahead. The Bucks are definitely good at being exactly who you think they are. Exactly. Exactly. But it sheds a light onto their relationship with Okada from the TNA days. Hmm. And it's just an interesting listen overall. Yeah. Like the time they were working in Dragon Gate and the ring fell apart and they had to do matches on mats for the public. Yeah. And now those people are changing the world. Yeah. And Seema was there. Seema? Yeah. John Seema? No, the Japanese dude. Yeah, I I was being silly. Oh. John Seema. Did we mention his retirement announcement on the last episode? I don't think we did. We we can talk about it now. Yeah, if you hadn't, if you guys, if you didn't know this, John Cena's retiring. Wait, I don't imagine, think we, no, because we haven't covered anything since Money in the Bank's happened. Imagine that, imagine that, imagine finding out that, you know, we're the ones that broke the story to you. <laughs> it was like two weeks ago, what are you doing? <laughs> you, that, you show, us. that show was okay. Oh, you called it though. Drew winning Money in the Bank. And then, you know, having Punk cost him that night. I thought it'd be perfect, and I was. Yeah. I, I thought, like, you know, they would at least, you know, not let the bell ring and then Drew could would still hold on to the case, but no. Did you watch the show or not? I watched it. Not live, but I watched it. Oh. Huh. Yeah, it's weird that it's on binge. Yeah. I wonder if it's moving to Netflix next year. Probably. But until then... But no, the whole Punk and Drew thing, it's because it, it's fun. Yeah, but like, way to waste an angle. Like, something as big as money in the bank, you know? Yeah, it could have been used so much better, I will agree with that. But also, at the end of the day, it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, and then we got to wait a whole another year for a men's money in the bank brief. Even though, like, like Damien Priest, is, it's just, I've, it's been whelmed. I've been whelmed by his run, you know? There's usually one of them that goes to waste. Yeah. There's usually one that gets you done on the same night and stuff. Like, they haven't broken tradition here, typically. Mm. 
It's just he becomes one of what, like four people to do it and fail. Yeah. Is it four? I think it's four. Him, Sandow, Cena. Who's the other one? Theory. Theory. Otis, Otis as well. He never got. Uh, no, Kennedy. no, no. He he lost it to. Um, no, no. We're not counting one people to lose it. We're talking about people that tried to actually cash in. Yeah, so okay. So, yeah. It's Cena, theory. Sandow, Theory, and uh, McIntyre. Yeah. <sighs> Wonder when that'll ha- happen with the women. The first failed cash, and they can't have it this year because we we can't have two failed cash ins in a year. Uh, probably like the year that Charlotte wins it or something. It'll happen. Mm. You won everything else. Yeah. Who won the women's one again? Uh, Tiffany. Oh, that's right. It's Tiffy time. Hey, good winner. That is a that is a good winner. I will give them that. Like, I could have seen, like, like, Uso or Gable would have been a good pick for the men's one. Yeah. Like, it's like, guys like, guys like that just get wasted, like, and have to tread water for another year. Uh, Uso will be back in the bloodline by the end of the year. I wouldn't worry about it. It'll be, uh, yeah, like, Roman's bloodline versus Solo's bloodline. Can we just take a second here to say that, um, they've got the characters in the new one wrong, and Jacob Fatu should be leading it? He's going to be the solo. He should be the solo of the group. I agree. <laughs> he's going to be the. He's, he'll be like you know the next in line. Also, your boy. They give him the easiest job to do, which is punch someone in the nuts, and he stuffs it up twice and punches his brother in the head. Yeah. I s- See, I'm all for. I'm Tam- they don't I'm even, Tam- they don't Tonga even, boy. They don't even trust lower in the ring. <laughs> yeah, that's right. so. Yeah. See if he's going to be the outside. He needs to be like the 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 mouthpiece. Then he looks good in a suit. Yeah, but um, I even even seen his botched debut from the reverse angle because like if you look <laughs> at it from the other other angle, it doesn't look so bad. But yeah, it's funny. Like people who watch the Fed and didn't watch anything else was celebrating this new signing, and people watching New Japan are just like, you can have him. <laughs> yeah, but like yeah. yeah. But, oh, he's been wrestling for what, at least fifteen years. Wasn't he like, he be... mate? He's not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's well. Hopefully, now that he's with WWE, he's constantly training and they're tightening those screws. I hope, just, but obviously, I'm just, not. I'm just hoping that that when GOD get a run with the tag titles, that they should showcase Tama. <laughs> Yeah, see, Tama can still go. But the thing is, I, I remember looking at that spot, but it's like, still, that's a tough one to get right. I suppose he should have just kept his forearms straight, not hooked it so hard to hit his brother in the head like that. But yeah. <laughs> you see the Instagram thing that I think I sent it to you, like with the sound effects for it? Mm. It's great. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And mate, what's going on with Joe Hendry at the moment? Like, he's everywhere on everything. Dude, we believe. Anytime I go on Instagram now, I just see random things. I keep sending them to you because they're great. The Joe, yeah, the Joe Hendry rabbit hole. Have you um added his crap to your Spotify or not? Uh, I mean, I, I listen to it on the way home from work sometimes. It's on my Spotify rotation. Okay. Then again, there's like 2,000 songs in my Spotify rotation. Yeah. If not more. Yeah, right. That's it's a lot of songs. I like music. You know this. I told you this. It's crazy. I know. Wow. Currently listening to a band called Iron Spherium, which is a death metal, power metal band. It's a weird combination, but it's all about Vikings and crap. It's pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah. Are you going to go and see San Cisco, whatever the fuck Steven's seen? Truthfully, I don't know, because I haven't listened to the song that he sent yet. And if I... I'll probably do it tonight because I might work until five and I'll get back to him about it. Yeah. My issue is um, I don't know if I'm going to like it or not because indie music for me is really hit and miss. I feel like this, you're not going to like it. I think you'd have a better chance at liking Skeggs than what you would have at liking San Cisco. You going with good things this year? 
I will wait and see what the lineup is like. Yeah, I'm pissed off at you because you got to see Fall Out Boy live where they played three songs for us and they cancelled the show. I didn't go to this last year's Good Things. I thought you did because um, I thought you did. I, no, I, I've seen Fall Out Boy before and I'm not paying 300 or whatever plus dollars just for Fred Durst. I mean, I did. I mean, yeah. Good. I also didn't see other bands there too, like Bullet and Corey Taylor. Yeah. And Thing is, I've kind of scratched. Make them suffer. About, and... Yeah. I've kind of scratched every metal itch I've, I have right now. I'm curious. To look, I'm going to wait and see what the lineup is for good things. I'm going to wait and see what the lineup is for not fast and make my decision then. Yeah. Did I, did I show you my new speed hat? Uh, yes, you did. Have you listened to them? What are your thoughts on them? I don't know them. You have to send me some songs and I'll check them out. They're like they're proper. They're like hardcore. Yeah, I got no problems with hardcore. I like Hatebreed. All right, I'll be sure to send you some of their songs and then we can review them on here. You should listen to the new Visions of Atlantis album. Okay, which is called Pirates Two. Looks like we both got some homework. We can do a music club on here. You recommend me an album for the week, like for the fortnight. I recommend you one. We'll listen to it and get back to each other on the following podcast. Yeah, that sounds I promise like I some... won't take any. I promise I won't take anything to the extreme by listening by, by recommending you something like Brand of Sacrifice. Yeah, because you know, if I hear like incoherent pig squealing, it's it's goodbye. Exactly, because I tried getting you to listen to Old School in Flames at one point. You didn't like them. Nah. But um, nah. yeah, Visions of Atlantis. They're a power metal band. I don't know if you are familiar with power metal, but they mm-hmm. have two lead singers, a male and a female, and they're okay. just. A very solidly knit band with like the whole idea of power metal is like fantasy sort of bullcrap. Yeah, right. With like no screaming and kind of like Dragon Force is a good way of describing it to you. Is it like Sleep Token? No, more like Dragon Force. If you are you familiar with Dragon Force or not? Nah, see, but I know we're gonna get to, we're just gonna go too far around in a circle here, so it's cool. That's nah, all good then. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. And who doesn't like Sleep Token? Yeah. I got to see them when they opened for Bring Me the Horizon, so that was cool. Was that your first time? Seeing Sleep Token? No, like hearing them. I knew of them prior, but it was my first time seeing them alive and pretty much listening to them. The Eden album they put out last year was very good. Yeah. Sleep Token are a very good band. Yeah. Strongly recommend for anyone listening. What we're we talking about? We're talking about wrestling at some point on here before we go into music. I was going to say we need to talk about the boys next. Yeah, interesting. The last season episode. final it was just yesterday, as of time of recording. Interesting last episode, and I have a question for you because we've seen Butcher with different powers to what he had with this. Because like every time he used the Temp V, he had like stuff equivalent to Homelander, whereas now he's just got tentacles. Like, is that because it's normal V now, and he just does each different v vial have a different ability? Like, what's the go here? I think it sort of depends, I reckon, on what that... Per- what you, It kind of ne- like works as to what you need most at that point, like who you are as a person, if that makes sense. What, so when he's, he, a, he's, when he, a, he's a snake? Is that what you're saying? When he first took it, it was, you know, he just was solely focused on, like, Homelander... And all this other stuff, and like that's why he had he kind of had the laser vision too, and like had that kind of strength about him. But then now, like he's just, uh, it's kind of like his priorities have kind of shifted. His brain's been corrupted, and mm-hmm. yeah, that's one. Thing, that's a weird thing I actually didn't pick up on. Is that yeah, his powers are different, Butcher. Interesting. So I he, thought you would have picked yeah. up on that because that was the first thing I picked up on. Yeah, I. I do like, you know, the way his character went, you know, for in this season where he's just slowly being corrupted and that. But yeah, like I think By, even uh, at, Jeffrey D. Morgan. Mm. I've forgotten what his uh, character's name is. We're getting we're getting Negan version of yeah. Butcher. Thing is, yeah. we still know that Butcher is living on borrowed time because once well, that is it now though, because he's embraced his superhero side, that means he should have the healing factor. Yeah, but that's only while he's got Temp V in his system. Well, he's got normal V in his system, though. I don't know what the, the, the difference is here now. Because, Maybe like, if he's, embraced his, if he's embraced his dark side, is he now good? 
So then, like, so he had, what, temp V the first time. That's why he had the Homelander stuff. And what, now he's just got normal compound V? Yeah. I'd say, yeah. Because, like, all the other heroes and crap heal pretty quickly. Maybe, yeah. But, again, he's got tumors in his brain. Like, they may... It depends, like, how quickly the tumors grow and how quickly the, you know, comp, the temp V or compound V can, you know, heal them. Can we just talk for a second here, too? Um, in regards to the boys, I didn't expect Kimiko and Frenchie to end up together. I thought it was just going to be platonic the whole way through, but I was wrong. I knew that it was they. They really should have ended up together, like at the end of last season, and this season should have been them together. But they just had them tread water and do some random shit for like eight. And it was just so annoying, like Frenchie's character this whole season, yeah, and like how he it. was he was fucking bi or gay for the first half, and then you know old mate left. Be- his character just made no sense to me for the first half of the whole season. Yeah, 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 yeah. Soldier Boy's coming back next season? Yeah, but before we touch on that, I want to finish up on Frenchie. All right. So he went to jail at the end of one of the episodes, right? And then he was still in it the next episode. Yes, and then, and then all... I think MM got him out. Why, why they now? Got, they got connections to the president, dude. They can do whatever. See, that was just so lightly brushed over, I felt. It was, but at the end of the day, it might be a plot hole, but I'm sure it might get touched on next season. It may be touched on, yeah, and we get, what, um, Gen V coming back soon? Probably Is that next a, year. Are we getting that this year or not? This year, next, next year, year or I not? Think next year, and I think the year after, or later, that's later next year, the boys as well. And then I think there's apparently they're pushing to make it a movie at the end. All right, we are getting a second season of Gen V because I thought it was just a one shot. No, I think we're getting a second season and then one more season of The Boys. Well, I thought we we're going to get like Mary and crap in the season of The Boys, but all we got was the fucking brainwashing nah. girl. No, nah, apparently they were just there for cameos and then like they're going to save Marie and shit for like, you know, Gen V. Yeah. <sighs> That's annoying. Because, like, Butcher shows up at the end of that, um, at the end of Gen V. Yeah. To see Mary and all that, which doesn't really tie into anything now. I guess we have to wait and see. Because they were saying, though, they kept saying that, like, you had to watch Gen V before, like, you started the boys and crap, but you really didn't. Besides the virus, there was nothing really important Mm -hmm. enough that you needed to know beforehand because you could have just written off everything else besides the virus. It's just like, yeah, that's a hero. That's their ability. Hmm. I guess we have to wait and see. I think the boys' writers are pretty smart, so... Well, it's the same with the main supernatural. Yeah. So I think it'll all of it in. Which now begs the question, because we have John Winchester being the dude inside of Ken Butcher's head. We have Dean Winchester, also known as Soldier Boy. Are we going to get Sam... Seeing as our Walker Texas Rangers being cancelled with Adelaide, maybe, and just to, like give the, give the supernatural. I don't know, just to give the supernatural fans a bit of a shout out. Be like, oh look, it's the guys from Supernatural all together and the boys. To, maybe like Soldier Boy has a nemesis, and it's yeah, the like it's who you said, it's the, the other yeah, brother. You, yeah, Sam Jared Padalecki. Padalecki, yeah, Padalecki, like, Padalecki. I don't know how to say his last name. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it could happen. I don't know how much of that. Uh, I don't know how much Supernatural you watch, but I liked it. I watched all fifteen seasons of it. I thought it was good. Mm. You didn't like it. I never got into it. I don't hate it, but I just there's so many seasons and so many episodes, so it's just so hard to. I mean, you could have gotten the same out of the first five episodes, uh, out of the first five seasons, but you know, it 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 it's all. Yeah. There are very loud pretty... cars driving past, man. I don't know if you can hear them. Nah. No, it's actually, yeah. You're actually pretty quiet on your end for a... Which I can't believe. Yeah, I'm at work, dude. Like I said, I'm trying not to yell and scream about everything like I normally do. This is more a laid-back, Jay. Wow, well, I mean, where is this Jay being the whole time we've been doing this? Where's this Jay being for the last 148 episodes? Why couldn't this Jay be in the previous 148 episodes? Oh, wouldn't that have been something? Can we call the episode Where's Jay and put me in a Waldo outfit? 
I was going to put you on Homelander, but yeah. That works too, I guess. You go, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Something about, so, you know, the boy. Go ahead. I know, something about the boys. I was going to workshop a couple of ideas with you. Yeah. Okay, so at the, end of the, at the end of the season, like, M gets captured, Kimiko and Frenchie are captured, um, mm-hmm. Starlight and um, can, um, Huey get captured. Where are they going to start next season? They're probably going to be in jail somewhere. Like, I'm like, um, then I, no, I think he'll make an example out of them. Like, you know, put him in jail and be like, he doesn't need to kill them. And Butcher next season is just being Butcher? Yeah. Right, 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 right. So predictions for next season then. Who kills Homelander? Butcher. And then Ryan kills... I don't think Butcher Butcher does. Actually, you know, I'm taking that back. I reckon you're right. I reckon home. Yeah, I reckon Butcher does kill Homelander. Ryan kills Butcher. I think you're right. Yeah, and then Ryan just runs off or something. You know, like he's ne- just goes and hides somewhere. How does the virus come into play? Does he accidentally like does Butcher use it intentionally on like Kimiko or on Starlight or someone else? Um, I think they just you know purposely you know will inject the soups with the virus, like they'll reopen the woods, but for like disobedient soups. Right. Right. And where's A-Train going next season? We didn't see him in the last uh, episode. No, I mean, yeah, I could send you some funny ass videos about, you know, like how happy like the black community was that A-Train didn't die in this episode. And what's going on with, um, the assistant lady who injected herself. I forgot Ashley. my name. Yeah, that one. Ashley. Uh, so apparently she is going to... In the comics, there's this character called Dr. Jupiter who is like this big, disformed kind of, you know, soup. And their power is they are basically a human shield. Like, nothing can penetrate them. Well, and people think that's what's going to be Ashley. Yeah, and people are saying, well, you know, that might be... Because we saw Ash- Ashley kind of convulging and, like, you know body parts moving around and shit then they're saying you know that could be her I mean who knows mm. I kind of want to read the boys before the next season starts I'm quite happy just you know chill and be here along for the ride like I'm curious like with Walking Dead because I read the comic books as you know I'm curious how much of it's like directly adapted yeah I'm curious is it all of it? Is it some of it? Is it about half? Like, what do you think? I guess we won't know unless we actually read it. Hmm. Are the comic books as good as the show? Are they as fucked up as the show? Because the okay. show is on another level when it comes to certain things. Yeah. Um, I don't... I mean, they're both in their own things. Like, there are some things you can get away with in a comic that you can't get away with on a TV show and, like, they have to stop and pivot. There's, like, a whole lot of other variables and stuff, so... There's a whole lot of crap you get away with certain media that you can't get away with in other media is what you're trying to say. Yes. It's like anime. Like, there's a lot of things you make for an anime. Like, there's a lot of things that are in anime that you can't make another adaptation of. Yeah. Well, this is One Piece, because for some reason, One Piece just works with everything. Hmm. you seen that Netflix show? It's very good. Yeah, I've seen the Netflix show of One Piece. Yeah, it was very good. I'm surprised how good that was, to be honest with you. Hmm. Season well, two, I, that's I was actually next I year, like I've just started very, filming. I was very satisfied with that. Yeah, well, season two is apparently coming out next year. They started filming it. Even the new like TV show, like real life adaptation of Avatar, was really good. I didn't watch it. I couldn't get. I. When you say very good, we talking like. Like one piece good or are we talking like the next T down? Right. So maybe like you you hark a show good. I know you don't know what that is, but it's on Netflix. Yeah. So obviously nothing beats the original anime of Avatar, right? Where does it end? So I think season one of the of you know 
in the oh, anime of, Anata- of Avatar the live. Let's say that there's like 20 episodes in the animation, but in the real you life, it, there's only... You nailed it because season one's 20, season two is 20, season three is 20. It's, you, you nailed it exactly right. Yeah, and then let's say like in the real life adaptation, there might have been like eight episodes. So like a bit of it does get condensed. And like they do gloss or skip over a few things, but I still think they do a really good job of it. Right. Are the actors good? Yes, they're actually at more accurate to the characters instead of like the movie you might remember, which was horrendous. No, we don't talk about that. Yeah. Like, whereas this, you know, they actually, you know, look like they're, you know, anime characters and like it's, I think it's pretty, it's very well done. It's like Dragon Ball Evolution, we don't talk about that either. Yeah, no. Speaking of, think, um, though, anime adaptations, it. crap like that, um, did you know, and I know you don't watch anime and stuff, so I don't know if what I'm about to say to you is going to make any sense to you or anything, but you've watched Dragon Ball, yes? Uh, in the past. As a, watched Dragon Ball. Yeah. As, in the past, so yeah. There's, there's another version of it called Dragon Ball Z Kai, which cuts out all the bull crap. So it's like more of a one-for-one adaptation, like cuts out the hours of screaming and just makes it more condensed. Or they just have like an episode of two people standing looking at each other. Yeah, that's not in Kai. Like Kai, like I said, yeah. is more of like a page for page adaptation instead of um. Yeah. 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 So there's a new One Piece anime coming out later this year or early next year, done by the animation company that made Attack on Titan, and I don't know if you've seen that or not. Uh, it put me down for no. Attack on Titan's very good. Picture, you know, just. I mean, you're probably not going to watch it anyway. Attack on Titan's very good. It's probably like the best anime of the last 10 years. Yeah. Um. So the company that made that are now doing a page for page, more condensed version of One Piece that's coming out later on, like so this year or early next year. Okay. Which is also being licensed by Netflix. Yeah, okay. Now that might be something cooking. to check out. It all ties back into things. Now, now we're cooking. So I'm not saying you should check it out when it comes out because I don't know if it's going to be any good or not. But um, considering the books for One Piece, speaking as someone who's read, I'm probably like 20 chapters behind now, but I can read that in an hour. Um, yep. is very fucking good. Yeah, I will keep that in mind. Yeah, that's a something to keep an eye on out then, I suppose. Indeed. So, before we get out of here, we've touched Money in the Bank, we've touched on Dynamite, we touched on the boys, we touched on everything else. Who's currently winning the footy? I think Adelaide... Oh, your team's are playing Essendon right now. I'm My team is Essendon. We're playing yep. Adelaide. You guys are down by two goals right now as we speak. I fucking tip Essendon. Yeah, you I told mean, me to still... tip Essendon. Oh, sorry, they're down by two points. I mean, that's nothing. That's less than a goal. If Essendon don't win this, I'm yeah. not listening to your tipping advice in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I had the Marge's 20 points, dude. You better not have screwed me. I think what I think I had like something more, but yeah. I no, think... Essendon, can't, Essendon can't beat teams at the moment. We're on a down, downward spiral. Mm. Just ain't happening. Okay, no. Yeah, I mean, you guys would be lucky to make the finals, and then you probably but... won't win a finals game, but yeah. the drought will continue. Yeah, the drought's been continuing for a long time. I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, are you, what are your thoughts yeah, on the Acolyte for Star Wars? I haven't seen it. Okay. What are your thoughts on the Acolyte for Star Wars? A lot of people are hating on it. Um, I think, like every sort of new TV show nowadays, like the first few episodes are pretty mid. But if you can get through those, it's it's not too bad. The Dark Side series, isn't it? Yeah, so it's set like 100 years before The Phantom Menace. So is it the High Republic era, or do you not know what I'm talking about? I think it's, yeah, High Republic. I'm going to say the High Republic era, yeah. You've got no idea. <laughs> I do. I have somewhat of an idea, but like they don't really touch on, like, you know, there's no real talk about the Senate or the High, Re- or the High Republic and shit, or, yeah. Okay, who's in power at the moment? Are the Sith in power, or the... No, Republic? Jedi. It's the Jedi. Okay, the Sith so have been okay. heard from. I, th- the, I the think Sith. it's the High Republic. Okay, so it might be the High Republic then. It'd be the high. I would say the High Republic, but the Sith hadn't been heard from a thousand years, all right? But now, is the Rule of Two in effect yet, or is the Rule of Two not in effect yet? Sort of. That's kind of the whole point of the show is that there's this secret Sith that the Jedi 
don't want the Senate to know about. And he's and the whole point of it is, is he's looking for an an apprentice or an acolyte. So the rule of two is in effect. Yes, he's sort of training like his apprentice, which means it's post Darth Bane. If you just watched it, you'd probably know. So, <laughs> but I'm a Star Wars again, nerd. I'm not. I'm not as big as a nerd as other people, but I, 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 I know a lot about Star Wars. I know a decent amount as well, but I guess it's hard to explain because I don't want to, like you know, ru- like potentially ruin it for you. The Darth Bane books, if you haven't read them or listened to them, once again, they're on Audible. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Are very good. There are three yeah. of them. And they, it is about the Sith Lord that introduces the rule of two. Yeah. I've it's, seen, like, I've gone down a few, like, Star Wars rabbit holes on YouTube and shit. And, yeah, I always know because they don't want to be the Jedi. They want to be better, and that's why it's their rule of two. Yes, that, that's correct. I know, yeah, and that either one of them can kill the other if they find, if they think they found, can find a better replacement. Indeed. That, that is the rule of two. Yes. Which makes no sense because they had a rule of three when it came to the Clone Wars. I think that was just Sidious being Sidious. Yeah. He... Well, it's starting to rain. Yeah, I mean, we are we do live four to six hours apart, so, I mean, weather is pretty obsolete when it comes to us at the moment. Yes, but I'm outside until 5 a.m. with very little shelter. You have a car? I do have a car. But I can't see what I'm securing with from my car. Sounds it's all like good. I'll figure it out. I have an umbrella on the car if I need it. Yeah, I'm about to say. I'm going to do a Google like... search here in a second and see how much rain I'm supposed to be getting. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like a you problem, bro. Thanks, bro. I appreciate it. Anytime, bruv. Oh, uh, bruv. What's up, bruv? Uh, bruv, bruv, bruv. Uh, look, bruv. we've tied it back into wrestling. Great. So... Acolyte, worth a watch? Not worth a watch? Maybe? I am going to watch the next episode after we're done here, and I think that may be the season finale. I, and I will tell you, I'd probably wait and see if they if there's a season two. It's been getting pretty poorly. It's been getting pretty poor reviews online right now, but there's a couple of good lightsaber battles in it. That's all you need in Star Wars. I mean, episode yeah, three is not great, and I like the fights in that. Yeah, I mean... Episode three, it's very funny because of the memes. So is episode two. It's all about sand. Yeah. See, like the dialogue is terrible, but the memes, and that's why we watch it. And the soundtrack. Why can't we just get a Kenobi season two? Why do we need a Kenobi season two? We got everything we wanted from se- in the one season. Because I like Kenobi. Hmm. We're the best Disney can show they've done for Star Wars. Hmm. I never and, got into the Mandalorian or the Book of Boba Fett. The Mandalorian's good. So I've heard, but like I said, I never got into it. Yeah. What about Andor? Never got into that either. So that's not too bad. You're not going to see lightsaber battles, but it's it's very political. I tried watching um, Mandalorian. Wasn't huge on it. Didn't watch Andor. Was going to watch The Acolyte if it turned out to be good. And loved it's watching It's okay at best. Yeah, I think we've done well. We actually, oh, actually, if we can stretch this out 20 seconds till we get to an hour, oh, and then I th- one, yeah. two, three. I, I think we can start to do our outros now. Have you, um, actually, before we get out of here very quickly, have you listened to the new Eminem album? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Have you listened to the new Eminem album? I've heard about it. I've, I've seen a couple of reviews. I haven't actually listened to it. Did the review say it was good or not? Because I'm contemplating listening to it tonight, but I don't want to waste time. <laughs> They say it's 50-50. Yeah, that's pretty much every Eminem album, though, to be honest with you. But I think this is him sort of grow- this is him sort of growing up and disowning the shady character, and half of it is him rapping in character, the other half is him dissing the character. Well, isn't the album called like The Death of Slim Shady or something? Yes. A coup de grace The Death of Slim Shady. Like he's killed off the character. This is the last one for Slim Shady. Yeah, and like, you know, I think it starts out, you know, with Slim Shady and then the second half is, you know, the actual death of him. So there you go. Like, I really liked Houdini. Mm. Have you heard it? I know the Dua Lipa song, Houdini. 
Uh, the Eminem song Houdini's, I really liked it. It's been on a, it's been played a lot since it came out on my phone. Okay. It might, it might be my um on a rotation song for the year for Spotify and the Year Awards. Yeah. Oh. Actually, I, I don't know what's going to be my most played album this year, like my most played artist and crap, because the last two three years it's been in flames, but I don't think it's going to be in flames this year. Yeah. What do you think it's going to be then? That's the thing. I don't know. But I haven't been listening to as much in flames as I used to. I guess time will tell. There's still plenty of time to turn it around. It might be Dark Tranquility if their album's good next month or the month after. Yeah. But considering only one of the singles they put out out of the three has been good, it's probably yeah. not good. Yeah. But before we get out of here, um, what was the album I had to listen to from you again? I've forgotten now. It's like real life love speed. I'm pretty sure I can find it, but yeah, I think you might, you, you might like it. And you need to listen to visions of Atlantis pirates. Number two, which I will send to you on. off the air. Yeah. I look at you're up now by 10 points. Oh, cool. Look at that. That's how you play football. Yeah. Good, good kicking. Good go, kicking. Oh, I want to actually go watch the last quarter. All right. You do that. I am being Jay Sola, who is about to be- go back to work. I'm Corey Gold, who's about to go and watch the footy. You do that. Um, and until next time. Yeah. Peace out. All right, so then I stopped the recording.